This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? When I was a wee lad between the ages of 11 and 18, I was an avid fan of the Nostalgia Critic. I would wait with bated breath for him to release a new review on some movie that I had never seen and never would see, and while that enjoyment has evolved into a more ironic fascination with the man behind the Nostalgia Critic persona, Doug Walker, I'll still watch a review of his from time to time. Somehow always in November, causing me to lose No Nostalgia Critic November, but recently it came to my attention that one of my friends had never known about the existence of the Nostalgia Critic lore movies. This sparked a newfound interest in good old Doug, and as I searched for his Twitter, I found at critic underscore fake on Twitter. On his page was posted an iceberg of the Nostalgia Critic and his various exploits, both known and not. I will be adding a couple of things to this iceberg that I believe should be included on it. So I come to you today, ready to go over everything on this chart to grow a deeper knowledge of not only Doug Walker, but also the entire Channel Awesome lore. This is an iceberg video. There are plenty of these polluting YouTube. I'm sure you know how they work. If I manage to get anything wrong about any of the facts on this iceberg, then I apologize and I bestow upon you this medal. So I'm going to dive right into the brown, muddy, diseased, septic waters of Channel Awesome's most popular reviewer. So grab, grab yourself, yourself a snack and a glass of orange juice, juice and, and try, not try not to reach, reach through the, the screen, screen because, because here, here we go! go. The Wall is a 40-minute, shot-for-shot recreation of Pink Floyd's The Wall. Doug caught a lot of flack for it online, as it was riddled with issues. For one thing, he seems to deliberately misrepresent the messages in the original to try and voice his own opinions on current issues, like taking scenes about the Blitz in London and calling it Oscar bait. So long, Oscar bait song. Smoke a bong and it will feel less wrong so long comparing the anti-school portion to the film to people dissatisfied with public school today. And taking an anti-fascist portion of the film and using it to critique cancel culture to name a few. It was also criticized for not having a real point as the review ends with I liked it fine. Yeah, me too. A little full of itself, but good music and imagination. Fair enough. And despite these problems, I've still seen it about four or five times. Hashtag Change the Channel was a movement that started in late 2014 as creators started leaving the platform due to management issues, sexual harassment allegations, and general mistreatment of Channel Awesome creators, including one case where one creator was fired without notice for being late to a Skype call, while others got away with sexual harassment for years without so much as a warning. It gets really rough and goes too deep to explain just here, so I would like to recommend one of the other bajillion videos out there discussing it. As I mentioned before, Doug Walker has an alternate movie-reviewing persona known as the Nostalgia Critic, who reviews media from his childhood as he points out how absurd it is. Hi! I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and you're not. No, you look a lot like him. That's even more than, like him than I do right now. To Boldly Flee is the fourth of the aforementioned anniversary movies that prominent Channel Awesome creators would collaborate on where they all go on silly adventures as their characters. One such movie, To Boldly Flee, is so infamously bad that it has been called by many people to be the worst film ever made. And it's not just some 20 minute review or 50 minute special, oh no. It's three and a half hours long. It's an ordeal to sit through to say the least, especially for those in the movie, as many were basically abused due to the incompetence of the Walker brothers. Linkara is another Channel Awesome reviewer persona played by Lewis Lovehog, who I didn't know about until about a year ago, so I never watched any of his stuff. He seems to review much more mainstream things like Power Rangers and Star Trek, with the addition of playing video games as well. He's probably on this iceberg because of his many collaborations with the Nostalgia Critic, but he has fans of his own too. Brad Jones is yet another Channel Awesome reviewer better known by the name Cinema Snob. I never watched any of his content despite knowing about him for much longer than Linkara, but he seems to review movies that aren't really tied to any specific era, and are also done in a more sarcastic, snobby attitude. He's also here because of his partnership with the Critic, but like Linkara, there are freaks out there who like him for his body of work outside of Nostalgia Critic. Doug Reviews is the title of another review show done by Doug Walker, with the difference being that he is no longer in character, 
and he can review much more recent, freshly released movies. Not much to it other than that. Malcolm Ray and Tamara Chambers are two friends and partners of Doug Walker, mostly fe who are mostly free featured Freddy for Freddy Freaker, who are mostly featured as actors in humorous nostalgia critic sketches and play characters from whatever movie critic is reviewing at the time. That credit card refers to a running joke in nostalgia critic content, which started in his review of Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin where Doug is repeatedly infuriated by the awkward choices in the movie, and is eventually pushed over the edge when Batman bids on a woman during an auction with the infamous Bat credit card. One million dollars. Two million. Three million. Four million. Six million. Seven million. Never leave the cave without it. A Bat credit card? They gave him a Bat? Credit card? Since this review, it has followed him to subsequent reviews and even conventions, where he has attacked convention goers who say the words bat credit card at him to elicit a reaction. And I really wanted to donate, but I was a bit frustrated because I couldn't feel like I could figure out why you wouldn't give me a bat credit card. A bat credit card! <laughs> Spoonie is yet yet another reviewer personality in the Channel Awesome space portrayed by Noah Antweiler, who largely reviews and plays video games. I don't really have much else to say about him. He also 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 did crossovers with the Nostalgia Critic, so that's why he's on this list. This refers to the feud between the video game reviewer The Angry Video Game Nerd, aka James Rolfe, and the Nostalgia Critic, aka Doug Walker. This feud is completely for show to reflect the avid rivalry between the fans of the two creators, who vehemently defend their favorite of the two, and call the other a... Uh, a... Uh, a bucket of mall Santa puke. This is a reference to Doug Walker's idiosyncratic way of screaming during his reviews. What more is there to say? ThatGuyWithTheGlasses.com is the website that was originally hosted by Doug to try and put his reviews on a website with a less stringent copyright policy, as he felt his reviews were being taken off YouTube unfairly. He then accumulated more creators who felt the same way, and the site then evolved into the channel awesome we all know and love today. Kick-Assia is the second of the anniversary movies released by the Walker Brothers, where Channel Awesome creators try and take over the real-world micronation of Molossia, and rename it Kick-Assia. In the film, Nostalgia Critic elects himself dictator and dresses as M. Bison from Street Fighter so that he can make all kinds of funny M. Bison memes. Say, Critic, do you get a lot of pussy with that outfit? Of course! He goes mad with power and is eventually defeated with the help of Santa Christ and Dr. Insano. Rob Walker is the older brother of Doug Walker and is the producer of many of Doug Walker's projects, as well as appearing as an actor in some of the videos alongside Tamara and Malcolm. He can also be seen in some Doug reviews known as Sibling Rivalry, where Rob and Doug will review a movie together and often have conflicting opinions about it. Why Does It Look Like Vegas refers to a popular moment on the Let's Play channel Oni Plays. During a playthrough of a video game based on Disney's Hercules, the topic of the Nostalgia Critics review of the Disney film came up, causing Oni to voice his qualms with the video in the form of a vocal impression of Doug Walker. I hate his criticisms of that movie because he, he's like, what? It's, it looks like Vegas! Why does it look like Vegas?! Melvin Brother of the Joker refers to an old comedy sketch of Doug's in which he is seen dressed as Heath Ledger's Joker and talks into his webcam explaining that he is the Joker's lesser known brother Melvin. This went on to be one of Doug's most divisive videos, as many hated the video because of how unfunny it is and others, like myself, adored the video because of its uncomfortable aura. Bum Reviews is another one of Doug Walker's review series where he plays a character called Chester A. Bum who is a homeless man who reviews movies in a quick and often incorrect manner. I believe the series has ended after 111 episodes, but Chester A. Bum will still show up in other Nostalgia Critic properties, from other reviews to Suburban Nights, speaking of which. Suburban Nights is the third of the aforementioned five Channel Awesome lore movies. 
It follows the Channel Awesome crew as they search for an ancient weapon dressed as characters from fictional properties. They eventually find it and battle an ancient sorcerer named Malachite, ending in a previously seen character, Ma T from Captain Planet, sacrificing himself to destroy Malachite and the weapon. And I'd like to say, the order that people usually put these boobies in is wrong. See, many people say that Kickassia is the best, followed by Suburbanites, then to boldly flee. But if you've actually seen these movies, you'd know that Suburbanites is the best. Like, did they forget that this is the only one of these movies with a funny joke? Well, already the credits are terrible. Don't review it! Ah! Or the scene where Doug Walker flaunts his big, throbbing nutsack one foot from the camera. In the original iteration of this section script, I didn't know what Uwe Boll was or his relation to Nostalgia Critic, but upon further research, I completely understand. You see, Uwe Boll is a film director known for his infamously bad video game movies. Nostalgia Critic has a tradition where he reviews Uwe Boll movies with himself, Spoonie, and Linkaro reviewing the movie alongside him. And one particular Uwe Boll review, the review for Blood Rain, has spawned an infamous gif that will never leave my mind. Yeah, Uwe Boll Reviews, I believe, refers to the origin of the Lankara running gif. Glad I dug a bit deeper. Ma T is, well, Ma T. From Captain Planet. But who is he in relation to Nostalgia Critic? Well, he first made an appearance in Nostalgia Critic's Captain Planet review, and soon after he made appearances in other Channel Awesome works such as That Guy with the Glasses Tag Team Brawl, Kick Assia, Suburban Knights, and To Boldly Flee. I guess the reason Doug chose Ma T of all people is just because he's obscure? I really have no answer as to what possessed Doug Walker to make this character so pivotal, but we love him all the same. Clipless Reviews is a style of Nostalgia Critic video where he reviews a movie so recent that it does not have a DVD copy for him to include clips of in his review. He instead will act out scenes of the movie with his crew, and he will then commentate on their acting of the movie. Other than that, it's just a standard Nostalgia Critic video. Mike McCod is the CEO of Channel Awesome, former admin of ThatGuyWithTheGlasses.com, and friend of Doug Walker, who, as the CEO of Channel Awesome, was at the forefront of criticism during the hashtag Change the Channel controversy. He has been accused of many things, again, a lot of which can be found in better videos than this one on the subject, so I'll just move on. Oni Plays is, as mentioned, a popular Let's Play channel started in 2014 by the internet personality Chris O'Neill, aka Oni. This is on the iceberg due to Oni's frequent mention of the Nostalgia Critic and friends on his channel, which has spawned many jokes and memes about Nostalgia Critic and even gotten a response from Doug himself on the Double Toasted podcast. He is also arguably responsible for much of Nostalgia Critic's recent popularity and meme status following the hashtag change the channel fiasco. This is a reference to the first Channel Awesome anniversary event at a convention in 2009. It's a 20 minute long video depicting various Channel Awesome personalities battling each other with appearances from Mati and AVGN. It's very similar in feel to the three lore movies produced later except for the fact that it doesn't really have a structure like a movie, it's far more like an internet video. There's not really much to say here, it's pretty self-explanatory. In Nostalgia Critic's review of Ernest Saves Christmas, Nostalgia Critic attempted to make a joke regarding something race-related. It's not really clear what was supposed to be funny about the clip other than the word's usage, but it's out there. In fact, it's right here. What's up, my niggas? Angry Joe is yet yet another another Channel Awesome reviewer. He does movies, he does crossovers with Nostalgia Critic, and he appeared in three Channel Awesome lore movies. And he does it in an exaggeratedly angry persona. He also stole an old video from OniNG and recreated it shot for shot for the intro of one of his Dragon Ball Z reviews. 
Nostalgia Critic once tried to make a video game Let's Play series and started with The Simpsons video game called Bart's Nightmare. The video is pretty much universally hated by everyone and stopped him from ever revisiting the idea again in the future. This just references the fact that in the Nostalgia Critic's review of Tommy Wiseau's The Room, he changes locations from his mayonnaise-covered reviewing room Covered? What the fuck? He changes locations from his mayonnaise-colored reviewing room to a wood-paneled basement early on in the review. This is done because the movie came out in 2003, and it was after the Nostalgia Critic's at-the-time cutoff date for what he considered nostalgic, so he must go to the future to make it nostalgic. The review carries on in the basement until he is taken back to his usual room at the end of the video because two talking seahorses are arresting him for watching the room, which is illegal in the future. Yeah. The famous Power Ranger rant, as far as I understand, is a phrase coined by OniPlays that describes a portion of a video made by Linkara, where he goes on a deranged tirade about how his series The History of Power Rangers does not have a set time of release, and the next episode will be out when it's out. The rant wasn't received well as Linkara speaks to his fans in a very condescending, angry tone as he rants on about his busy schedule and whatnot. And if you want my opinion, it sounds a lot like a video Chris Chan would make. Ju Wario, aka Justin Carmichael, was yet, yet, yet another, another reviewer on the Channel Awesome website that, as far as I can tell, covered the usual from anime to manga to video games. It also may be important to note that he took his own life in 2014 after it came out that he had sexually assaulted two women. After Doug Walker killed off the nostalgia critic after to boldly flee, he crowdfunded a game show with a goal of $50,000. He surpassed this goal with $89,757. The show is universally hated for its poor budget management, confusing rules, and lackluster prizes. People felt that he should have done more at their $89,000. And if you look at some of these clips, the expression, uh, oh hey, look at that, he actually has a blue blood. I never knew that. This is an $89,000 quiz show where the bat nipples are just pieces of blue painter's tape. Yes, and uh, my last name is Beverage, and no one ever, it's spelled differently, but no one ever believes that. How and do you spell Beverage differently? <laughs> I like how the studio audience is made up of approximately six people, and half of them are laughing. Yeah, it's kind of pathetic. The premise of the rules is that Nostalgia Critic would ask a question about some pop culture reference, and you had to get the question right to get points. You could also get points by making the Nostalgia Critic laugh at your answer. But this loophole leads to some inconsistencies in Doug's behavior and some pretty cringe moments. Ryan, finish this Kevin Spacey line. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was... You're tearing me apart, devil! <laughs> Good guess. And you know what? Let me give it to him because that movie would have been so much better if they had that line. Give him that <laughs> So he didn't get the question right, and he also didn't make Doug Walker laugh. So why did he get the point? Doug Walker, you are fake, fake news. news. Like the N-word entry earlier up the iceberg, Doug made what many people thought was an off-color joke regarding autistic children in his Ernest Saves Christmas review. Ernest Saves Christmas was really not a good video for Doug, was it? He addressed this mistake and apologized for it, unlike the last one, and many just forgot about it or just didn't see the big deal anymore and just acknowledged that it wasn't funny rather than offensive. In a Linkara review of the comic book adaptation of Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin, Nostalgia Critic appears out of static to make the Bat credit card joke. Linkara explains for about a minute and a half that the Bat credit card is not a big deal and actually kind of plausible. Nostalgia Critic is left speechless, and Linkara tells him to Get in the corner! Okay. And the review continues. Guru Larry is yet, yet, yet another, another, another Channel Awesome reviewer personality who started in 2009 and reviewed video games. Next. I'll be honest with this one. I have no idea what this is talking about. I think this refers to his comments about the overly sexualized transformation scenes. I just saw it as a pretty average nostalgia critic review, but that's just me. This is a meme going around that consists of people photoshopping Doug Walker's head onto movie posters in awkward positions to reflect how predictable and bizarre a lot of them are. For example, can you tell me which of these thumbnails is not real? Exactly! All of them are fake! 
except for this one. I guess this can also refer in part to the Twitter account I got this iceberg from. They post fake Nostalgia Critic thumbnails all the time, so maybe. Dougism is a meme religion dedicated to worshipping Doug Walker and poking fun at him. Unless the Urban Dictionary definition is true, which, I mean, I do too. Demo Reel was an attempted show run by Doug Walker following the end of Tobordly Flea that follows a production company that is aiming to get Hollywood's attention by reenacting popular movies. The show featured the whole familiar band of characters including Doug, Rob, Tamara, and Malcolm. The show ran from October 30th, 2012 to January 13th, 2013. And on January 22nd, a video was released signaling the end of Demo Reel and the return of Nostalgia Critic. The Review Must Go On is a special that was released in 2013 that effectively ended Demo Reel and brought back the Nostalgia Critic. It only serves the purpose to state that the Nostalgia Critic character is returning and many think it's his magnum opus, and I have to agree wholeheartedly. There's not much to say about either of these, so I just lumped these two entries together since they're basically the same thing. Doug Walker doesn't like Phil Collins or Elton John, that is all. This is the movement that had the mission statement to get YouTube to fix their copyright system. Nostalgia Critic made a video where he mentioned different creators who were shafted by the system, and some guy made a video claiming Doug was wrong about the copyright system. Uncanny Valley is the fifth and final Channel Awesome lore movie, where the Channel Awesome crew finally realized that they don't like each other and made this movie out of separately filmed skits on their own channels. Research for this entry states that Spoonie shouted betrayal in public after XCOM FPS was announced. BETRAYAL! What? BETRAYAL! P.S. Thank you to Reddit user Brody M. The Birdie for providing much of the facts about this iceberg. Phaelus refers to Phaelus, yet, 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 another, another, another channel awesome creator who reviewed bootleg movies. Moving on. Lindsay Ellis played the Nostalgia Chick and was yet, 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 another, 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 another channel awesome creator who reviewed girly nostalgia things. So, like, Rule 63 Nostalgia Critic, basically. But she deleted all of her old videos and considers them embarrassing. She also holds great disdain for Doug Walker, as she has said that Doug is an inspiration to her because whatever he does, she always finds success in the opposite. Her actual quote is some real heat, but sadly I can't find it. Maybe it never existed and I made it all up. You'll never know, and neither will I. Doug Walker seems to be under the impression that something isn't funny unless someone is the butt of a joke. Whether that means physical violence or being made fun of, that doesn't matter, and it reflects in his reviews. Todd in the Shadows is yet, 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 yet another, 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 another Channel Awesome reviewer who talks about music and keeps his face hidden throughout. EFAP, believe it or not, does not actually refer to any Nostalgia Critic porn, but instead refers to every frame a picture, which as far as I can tell is a podcast run by another YouTuber by the name of Mowler. All this seems to refer to is him expressing his unsavory opinions about the Nostalgia Critic on the show. Donnie Dupree is a main character portrayed by Doug Walker in his cancelled series Demo Reel. He actually apparently has two backstories, one where he was a failed child actor who went on to become a hated director, and the other is the more meta idea that when the Nostalgia Critic sacrifices himself to the plot hole at the end of Dwoldly Flea, he is destroyed and reborn in a new universe as the Donnie Dupree character. No Nostalgia Critic November is the challenge one takes part in where you simply do not watch Nostalgia Critic for the entire month of November. This might seem easy, until you're flipping through your phone and someone uses Nostalgia Critic in a meme or makes a video about them. That's right! If you're watching this video in November, then you just lost. The consequence, as laid out by the original post, states that you must change your name and profile picture on Discord or Twitter to that of Doug Walker for the rest of the month. Originally, this was no Nostalgia Critic February, but I changed it because, well, first of all, I misread the image when I first found it, and second of all, I like the alliteration better. I have no recollection of who started this, 
I thought it was Teapot Lad, but upon further research, uh, he's just the creator of the original image, which is some Coomer meme and not a nostalgia critic thing at all. And as I mentioned before, I've lost every year I took part in, purely because I forgot. My record is currently getting to November 5th. After watching three of the most prominent Channel Awesome lore movies, I noticed that there was a series of videos on Channel Awesome that consist of Doug Walker as the nostalgia critic reviewing Kickassia, Suburban Nights, and To Boldly Flee. These videos in themselves wouldn't be anything special if it wasn't for the bizarre effect they have on lore. They take place in a hotel room with the nostalgia critic sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor. He then reviews the movies as normal, but refers to the characters with improper names, including himself, who he dubs the nostalgia cricket. Again, not much to dissect lore-wise, until he makes it known that the hotel room he's in is actually the inside of the plot hole from To Boldly Flee. Beyond imagination, beyond the understanding of time, beyond all thought that man has ever conjured up, there is the mysterious realm of the plot hole. As you can see, this purgatory of hell it's had quite an impact on me. I haven't bathed. I haven't cut my hair. I haven't even shaved. So, like, he just experienced everything he's reviewing, but he doesn't remember it? He, he clearly does remember it because he knows, he, he knows he's been consumed by the plot hole. I can't really figure out what the deal is about these lore-wise. There's another layer that, to me, is more interesting. Watching these reviews, he really seems to legitimately despise them, and the fact that these reviews take place on a hotel room floor make it really obvious that this was a spur-of-the-moment idea. So it seems like to me that something happened to Doug while he was offset that made him feel like he had to denounce these movies immediately. I wonder what can make him turn on these reviews so quickly. I mean, I don't think that- oh. This is just a lump of two more specific things I talked about earlier, those being the change the channel controversy, and to a lesser extent, the amount the other channel awesome creators hate Doug Walker, like my example of Lindsay Ellis. I also lumped the way too many nostalgia critic documentaries in here too, because in the change the channel entry, I already talked about the god awful amount of change the channel coverage videos people made. This is just his old tagline for his top 11 videos, He's not only stopped making top 11 videos, but he's also stopped saying, Why top 11? Because I like to go one step beyond. The audio is going to be a little bit shitty. Uh, this is me overdubbing the um, Geoff Killy is screwing me section because the initial uh, entry I had was kind of fucked up. So what this actually refers to is... Um, a somewhat quote from Angry Joe after he interviewed Geoff Keighley and um, both of them didn't really react to the interview very great. Angry Joe got really mad and Geoff Keighley kind of blew off Angry Joe as like this internet reviewer. Um, that's about it. This year. Exactly, didn't come out this year. Okay, okay, stop, stop right here. You can tell right away this guy's f***ing with me. This is a quote from the first Oni Plays Mario Paint video where he drew Doug Walker and laughed at how scary it became, likening it to a creepypasta. I put in a Nintendo cartridge into the nostalgia critic and Peter Griffin glared at me. <laughs> this refers to an old creepypasta about nostalgia critic reviewing Barney's Great Adventure before it infects his brain and makes him go on a killing spree because it's so bad. He has since actually reviewed Barney's Great Adventure, so I guess this creepypasta is no longer canon. Okay, so from here there are more joke entries that take way less time to explain than real ones, so this iceberg is going to become a lot shorter from here, as there are not only fewer entries, but also fewer real ones. At one point during Nostalgia Critic's run, Nostalgia Critic's hat was changed to a different one. I guess it used to look like a squished baseball cap, and now it's like a slightly taller black denim looking hat. He also seemed to get a lot happier over the years too. This is just an old Top 11 video where he puts Sailor Moon on the list and mocks himself for it. I think some people found it creepy that he put a 14 year old on his Top 11 hottest characters list, hence why it's so low. This is a joke conspiracy theory that Doug Walker's glasses don't actually have lenses in them. See what I mean about there not being much to talk about? 
So YouTube personality Quentin Reviews uploaded a video onto Boldly Flee well after the movie came out, and some people took issue to this or just didn't like it in general. And when they stated that on the Channel Awesome subreddit, Quentin came on and started blasting people for holding that opinion. And like, I like a lot of his stuff, but I don't know how he expected everyone to like that video. It's good, but you're gonna have some haters no matter what. Spooning with Spoonie is a series of videos in which Spoonie lies in bed with various Channel Awesome creators and is implied to have had sex with them. In episode 1, Spoonie is in bed with Lindsay Ellis, who is heavily implied to have been date raped by Spoonie off screen. He also is in bed with Chrissy Diggs, aka that chick with the goggles. This is amazing. It's like it's like kind of being in the middle of a black and white cookie. Benzai also makes a brief appearance in the end. In episode two, Spoonie date rapes the Nostalgia Critic. By the way, um, in case you're, uh, in case the Nostalgia Critic here doesn't remember it, so I don't have to, I can tell you why. Three words: Rohypnol. <laughs> and Nostalgia Critic lies in horror for the rest of the episode. Then it pans over to Angry Joe, who was also raped, but instead of lying in fear, gets up and strangles Spoonie. Bennett White also makes an appearance. They don't really talk about much other than make sex jokes and make the audience with six years of hindsight cringe in their seats. This is apparently the video that EFAP made fun of in his video and nothing else. A Tumblr post from the user Methylbenzene revealed that there was once a con that was attended by Nostalgia Critic where he had a panel scheduled right after an 18 plus panel hosted by a man known only as Derek. During Derek's panel, he was sponsored by Bad Dragon and was given a free semen spewing dragon dildo. He then filled the dildo with icing and frosted a Cinnabon with it. After the panel was over, Nostalgia Critic walked in to do his own panel and, not knowing what had transpired, found the cinnamon roll and said, hey, free Cinnabon, and proceeded to eat the cinnamon roll. As far as I can tell, he either still doesn't know that this happened, or he simply hasn't responded to the rumors as of now. Five Second Movies is Doug Walker's first internet series and predates Nostalgia Critic. It's pretty self-explanatory that he would just take a movie and cut it down to five seconds, either to make fun of it or make you laugh. In the review must go on, none of the characters are expressly killed off, and some, such as Carl and Quinn, appear in later Nostalgia Critic videos, so it is implied that they are still alive in some form. This is the first movie that Doug reviewed after Nostalgia Critic's return. He also considers The Odd Life of Timothy Green to be such a bad movie that he wanted to bring back Nostalgia Critic just to review it, which is a little harsh. He certainly reviewed worse movies than that, but what do I know? This is just a critique of the post to boldly flee Nostalgia Critic. The Iceberg creator is taking a jab at the fact that many modern Nostalgia Critic videos are more skit heavy, especially in the case of the Clifflets reviews, which I kind of agree with personally. I mean, during COVID, Doug couldn't meet with the rest of his crew, so many of the Nostalgia Critic reviews made during this time were made exactly like the old ones, with no skits and all quips from Doug himself. And I gotta say, I like these reviews a lot more. Although, I'll never forgive his Superman Returns review for making me lose 2020's No Nostalgia Critic November. This is a theory that Mike McCaud is still holding Doug's leash enough to force him to keep making Nostalgia Critic reviews, which is unlikely considering that he still seems to have fun making them. It also could refer to the idea that because Nostalgia Critic is currently Doug's primary source of income, he can never move on to something else without risking his livelihood. This is a reference to the fact that Doug Walker is a secret genius and should be revered. Years ago, Spoonie wanted to make a Spoonie movie in the same vein as the AVGN movie, and when he got the funds for it, nothing happened. It's speculated that he may have just pocketed the money for his own use, which, while not a pyramid scheme, is still fucked up, but I can't see any evidence that he actually did that, so it might not be real. This is a joke entry parodying the Wario Apparition creepypastas. Sorry, Linkara, I did indeed research. This is a joke entry that means literally nothing. During both To Boldly Flee and The Review Must Go On, Doug Walker comes into contact with his Nostalgia Critic character physically many times, hinting that they are different people in Channel Awesome lore. 
because <laughs> Vegas looks like Greece, you fucking idiot. <laughs> This expands on the idea that Doug Walker cannot stop doing Nostalgia Critic. That is essentially the theory that if he stops doing Nostalgia Critic, then people won't like him anymore and he will no longer have any income. Which we can't really say for sure is untrue until he actually does it. And that was the last of it. If anyone actually sat through that whole thing, thanks for watching. This is sort of my first attempt at a video for a wider audience than just my friends. And I actually learned a lot while making it. Specifically about Channel Awesome and more specifically about how to make better YouTube videos. So that's it. I'm out of things to say. Look out for projects on this channel in the future, and if I got anything wrong, please let me know. Iceberg corrections videos are as popular as icebergs themselves, so if I get enough corrections, maybe I'll do that. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, or dislike and discomment and describe.